Let's get into our devotion before I get any interruptions this morning. Looking at a topic um, of overthinking. So, again, I just wanted to um, reiterate what we was trying to say. So if you just join me, this will be new to you. If you was with me a few minutes ago, you'll hear this again. But we're thinking about the topic of overthinking and, and the way that the devil will put things in our mind and put things in our head and I, I'm, like I said, I think every single one of us has um, been guilty. I'm guilty of this. Folks, I am guilty of this. I'll be the very first one to tell you that, and, and Dusty will laugh because she says that I get it from my mom. I don't know, um, but I know mom does it, and I'm sure I, I'm, I'm very guilty of it, I will admit. But I overthink things. Somebody will say something or do something, um, and then I start thinking about it and I dwell on it more and more. But here's my problem is there may be a time where that I think something might happen. You know, I think somebody might react a certain way. And then I'll have in my mind, I have these imaginary arguments and, you know, that I get upset and, you know, situations may pop up or someone might say something or you ponder too much. And I, again, you know, Dusty laughs at me because I actually do this very often. You know, I'll see something or, or, or see a situation that might happen a certain way. And I'll tell Dusty, well, if this happens or if that happens, then I'll tell this person this or I'll tell person that. And, you know, I, I had this imaginary argument in my mind. And then I'll tell them, I say, listen, you know, if, if they do this, then I'll say that. And then if they say that, then I'll say this. And, and I carry this big old long argument, imaginary argument in my mind. And then, you know, I'll, Dusty will finish up by saying something like, well, did that happen yet? Did somebody say that? Or, or did this happen? And I'm like, no. And then she'll be like, then why are you upset? Why are you mad? And I'm like, oh, I'm not. I'm just saying this is what I'll do if it happens. So I don't know. I don't know if you guys ever been guilty of that, but I, I am. I you know I have imaginary arguments in my mind, and then most of the time, it don't even happen. Most of the time, the situation that is making me angry or getting me upset doesn't even happen. And you know that's the way the devil works. He wants to put fear and aggravation in your life, and we react upon it. For no reason, for no good cause. And and I've said this already and I'll say it again, but you know, I'm not saying that the Lord's not expecting us to think about situations. I'm not saying the Lord isn't expecting us to think things through, because certainly he does. Go to James chapter one, verse nineteen. It says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Proverbs chapter 15 verse 28 says, The heart of the righteous studieth to answer. In other words, they think about what they're going to say before they say it. But the mouth of the wicked poureth out evil things. So, you know, the Lord is expecting us to think things through. A situation that might happen, we should have a plan. We should, you know, know what we're going to do. But to get ourselves worked up and frazzled and angry for no reason is something that the devil wants to put upon God's people so we can lose our joy. Because listen, there is no joy in Jesus Christ when we're living in anger. There's no joy in Jesus Christ when we're living in fear. And so if Satan is, is trying to trick you with fear or, or trying to get you angry all the time, then, you know, that's robbing us of our joy. You know, so <clears throat> be thinkers... But be careful of being an overthinker. In other words, be careful of overthinking situations that's not even happened. You know, and this brings us to a story, and forgive me, it's not a funny story. It's, it's not, but I can't help but to chuckle when I read this because I see myself in this. Thankfully, I've never done, I've never gone to this ex extreme. But in my mind, you know, I've been aggravated on things. And it says, there's a man named Jack and he was driving down a dark country road and one night he got a one night he got a um, flat tire he saw a cabin in the woods and began to walk towards it for help as he was walking towards the cabin he told himself that the person who answered the door would probably be angry or irritated for the for the interruption 
And so, in fact, it said the person would probably harm him. He's like, as he was walking, he continued to think and said, well, he's probably a truly terrible person because who else would live out in the woods away from people? So Jack convinced himself that the person who lived in the cabin was a menace to society. So when he knocked on the door, there was a man that opened the door and Jack was so aggravated that he punched the man in the nose and took off running. And, and that's the end of the story, but, and I don't know, hopefully this isn't a true story, but like I said, it's sad because, you know, the man that got punched in the nose, he was guilty of just opening up the door. But the story, the moral of the story is we work ourselves up and, and, and you know, a frenzy most of the time for no reason whatsoever. And see, this is what the devil likes to do. He likes to play on our emotions. He likes to play on our thoughts. And, and he wants to rob us of our joy. And, you know, and again, I've gotten, there's been times that I've gotten angry, you know, for just having an imaginary argument in my mind. My question this morning, you know, are you tormenting yourself with make-believe arguments of scenarios that's not even happened yet or may never happen. You know what? You know, we all know what Jack should have done in the story, right? You know, we know that Jack should have knocked on the door. Jack should have asked for help. If the man did get angry and upset and irritated that he was afraid that this man might get, then all Jack had to do is say, I'm sorry to bother you. Turn around, walk away, and go on his way. But Jack had lost the opportunity for help because of a made-up argument and scenario in his head that may not even happen. Jack could have knocked on the door and said, Sir, can I use your phone or can I get some help? I have a flat tire and, and I'm, I'm all by myself. And the man may have had compassion and said, Come on in and help them out. But you never know because Jack done socked the man in the nose and took off running. So, again, I've not been guilty of that that far. I've not gotten an imaginary argument and then punched somebody in the eyeball because of it. But, you know, I'm sure that there's been times where I've lost opportunities, you know, because of what somebody might do. How many times have you talked yourself out of a job interview? You know, you might have had a job interview and you go in and, and knock on the door and think, you know what, uh, um, I'm not going to go in because I'm afraid that, you know, I'm not qualified or, or whatever. You know, there's so many different things that could happen. Miss opportunities of friendships because you don't know if somebody's going to like you for yourself or not. Even people will have a miss opportunity of salvation because they think that because they've sinned so much and they've gone so far in sin that they don't even think that Christ would save them or God would love them. And they talk themselves out of salvation. Isaiah 59.1 says, Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save, neither His ear heavy that it cannot hear. Folks, listen. Don't talk yourself out of an opportunity. Don't talk yourself out of God's blessing. Listen, that's all i got for you. i got to go. Listen, thanks for watching.